Let's take a look at this proof. If you look at the uh, original given, the given, given tells you that you have the diagram as shown. Uh, we have this straight line here with uh, what appears to be a triangle dropping below it. We have angles labeled 5, 6, 7, and 8. Look like the angles that we're going to be focusing on in this problem. Uh, we're told that angle 6 is congruent to angle 7. Never hurts to mark both of those congruent. Visually, hopefully you can see that it really appears that angle 5 and angle 8 are congruent to each other. And in fact, that's what I'm going to be showing in my proof. I'm going to show this proof two different ways. Uh, the first way I'm going to uh, show this proof is using the idea of supplementary angles. Um, and specifically, the reason I'm using that approach is the fact that you'll notice angle 5 and angle 6 form a straight angle. If angles form a straight angle, they're going to be supplementary to each other. We can see the same thing over with angle 7 and angle 8 as well. So when I see double supplementary angles, a lot of times I think, well, maybe I can use that idea of having supplements of congruent angles or supplements of the same angle. It doesn't guarantee that it's going to work, but it's a good strategy to consider at least. So all proofs start out the same way. You have your diagram as shown statement here. You have any givens Okay, and so that first reason is given. Um, I'm also told that angle 6 is congruent to angle 7, and that was also given. At this point, I'm going to use the idea of supplements of congruent angles. But to be able to do that, I need to be able to say that I have supplementary angles. And to be able to say that I have supplementary angles, I need to show that those angles either add up to 180 degrees or that they form a straight angle. Um, in this case, you're going to be able to see that my angles form a straight angle. Those steps all have to be included in the proof. So I have to say that I have straight angles in the first place. So step number three, um, I'm going to be looking at this straight angle with the vertex at O, since that's where angle five and six come together. Um, that's angle ROS. So I'm going to say that angle ROS is a straight angle. And the only reason I know that, I'm assuming that from the diagram. It appears to be a straight angle. That's one of the few things that I am allowed to assume. Most of the time you see a diagram as shown statement, you're going to be making an assumption from the diagram. And this tends to be the big one that you'll be making. So the reason there is assumed from diagram. I also need a second pair of straight angles. If I'm going to talk about supplements of congruent angles, I need double pairs of supplementary angles. So I need a second straight angle over here at vertex S. That's OSE. So angle OSE is a straight angle. And the reason is the same, so I'm just going to put quotes here. I don't need to recopy that. Step number five, I need to state that I have angles that are supplementary. If I'm going to talk about having supplements, I have to have shown supplements earlier on in my proof. So you can see here, angle five and six are supplementary. And I need to write that as an if-then statement. Um, we have different methods. I could talk about the angles adding up to 180 degrees, but I'd really like to do the shorter definition here. Uh, if you remember, our book allows us to say if angles form a straight angle or if the sum of angles is a straight angle, we're allowed to say they're supplementary. So I'm going to say if the sum of two angles is a straight angle, then they are supplementary. I take a look. I need a second set of supplementary statements here. 7 and 8 are also supplementary. So angle 7 and angle 8 are supplementary. Once again, save myself a little bit of writing here. It's for the same reason. They form a straight angle. I've already shown that I had the straight angle back earlier in the proof, so we know that that is completely fine to say. And at the end, we've shown that 5 and 6 are supplementary. 7 and 8 are supplementary, and notice the angles that I'm trying to prove congruent, 5 and, and 8, are both supplementary to congruent angles. So I can conclude that angle 5 is congruent to angle 8, 
And the reason being, if angles are supplementary to congruent angles, then I can say that they are congruent. That's my final reason. So again, you do want to go back and make a quick check. Make sure that every time you use an if statement that you actually have shown that information earlier in your proof. Here I talk about angles being supplementary to congruent angles. You can go back here and you can see that I've shown two angles that are both supplementary to congruent angles. So I have those previous steps shown. Uh, here I talk about the sum of two angles forming a straight angle and I have straight angles shown earlier in my proof. You can see that the pieces here fit together fine, so it looks like my proof should be complete and correct. I'd like to come back and show a second way to do the proof that I just showed using supplements of congruent angles. This time I'd like to show this using the subtraction property. It's an alternate method. Different people will visualize this different ways, and so I wanted to make sure that you've seen both possibilities here. Um, so, same setup as before, uh, 5 and 8 are being proved congruent. We're told that 6 and 7 are congruent. This time I'm going to subtract these two congruent angles from the straight angles. That'll leave me with a congruent 5 and 8. The most important thing that you have to understand though, if you are going to be using any of the four properties, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, you need to make sure that you have equal things being done to things that are equal. Okay, in this case I'm dealing with angles. So I need to be able to show that I have congruent angles in the first place and that I'm removing congruent angles from both of them. Well, you'll see I was given congruent angles. I don't need to do any additional work with that. But if they're being removed from angles, I have to show that the angles that they're being removed from are also congruent. If that's the case, then I'm allowed to use the subtraction property. So, why are these two angles congruent to each other? They're congruent to each other because they're both straight, ang straight angles. So I need to make sure I include that in my proof. So, same as before, I'm going to say that angle ROS is a straight angle. And again, that's going to be assumed from diagram. I'm going to say that the second angle at vertex S, angle OSE, is a straight angle. And that is also assumed from diagram. And this time, instead of say, stating that I have angles that are supplementary, I'm going to state that those two straight angles are congruent to each other. So I'm going to state that angle OS, uh, ROS is congruent to OSE. So I have to have congruent angles to be able to subtract congruent angles and show that I have two new remaining congruent angles. Uh, the reason these are congruent, they're both straight angles. So I can say, if angles are straight angles, then they are congruent. So, now I've shown that I have two congruent straight angles. I have shown that I have smaller congruent angles. I'm going to be removing both of those smaller congruent angles and I'm going to be left with angles that are congruent. So if I'm subtracting congruent angles from congruent angles, that's the subtraction property. I'm going to be able to say that angle 5 is congruent to angle 8 by the subtraction property. And at that point, I'm done.